Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Wednesday catch-up. I've been asked by quite a few viewers if I can show one of the methods I use for lining my lathe up. That is to say, making sure the tail stock and the head stock are perfectly in line. That's what this video is all about, lining up the head stock and tail stock on a lathe. As I mentioned on Sunday's nightcaps, this coming weekend, be Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I'll be at the NEC Birmingham, I'll be on the Ortex stand and I'll be on the Extreme Plasma stand those three days. If you want to come and see us, say hello, shake my hand, I'll probably end up buying you a cup of coffee or you can buy me a cup of coffee. Anyway, it'd be great for you to come and say hello, I do like meeting viewers. I was editing some film, uh, I think it was last night or the night before, and I noticed that when I drilled a hole in the lathe, the drill wasn't going into the centre of the piece of bar, it was very, very slightly off. One of my viewers actually commented on this, that means that the tail stock and the head stock aren't perfectly lined up. I'm going to show you how I line mine up, there's two or three different ways of doing it. Uh, I'm going to show the way I prefer to do it. And we're looking at the tail stock in line with the head stock, if in fact it is out of line. I'm going to use a taper in there so there's no chokes or nothing that's going to be straight into the, into the headstock spindle itself. First thing to do is make sure it is nice and clean in there, you want no debris in there at all. Then I've got an adapter that takes it from whatever taper that is to a more straight taper. i make sure that's nice and clean as well. That takes out any little particles or some little bits there. Just make sure it is nice and clean. Same with the outside. That goes into there. I've got an old most taper drill end here. The driving part of a most taper drill that I use is a, what I would call a soft centre. That goes into there. Make sure it's nice and firmly home. And what I'm going to do is remachine that taper on there, 60 degree taper. I'm going to recut a new taper so that the point there is going to be dead on centre line of the lathe. I've set the compound side up at 30 degrees, which will give us a 60 degree point. Start the lathe up. I have got an adapter that goes on here and you screw that on to stop that from spinning, but somebody's got a lender at the minute, so I can't put it on. actually wasn't bad anyway that's all I need just that little bit like that so we've got a nice new sharp point on there which is dead on centre height of the layer that can't be anything else that's got to be got to be what it's got to be next thing is to clean out the tail stock unfortunately this had a handle on and I snapped the bastard thing off which is a great shame one of my viewers sent it in to us I'm going to try and get a screw to go in there so I've got a handle. Right now, I've got something to get a hold of. I will put a wooden handle on this so I can use it properly. You can see what's picking out little shreds of metal. You should really have a blank in here all the time when it's not being used. Still bringing little bits out. That's better. I've got a, a centre here that I only use for this particular job. A nice new one. That goes in there. Then they get a quick idea of how good or how bad your lathe is. if we look at the two points you can see the tail stock point this one is not hitting which means this tail stock is too close to me if I put a steel ruler in there I'll take the camera back a little bit so you can see if I put a steel ruler in there bring that in 
the steel rule has landed at an angle, it's across there, which means that this point here is to this side of centre. So we need to adjust it. It's a long way out as well. Up and down doesn't really matter as much. Up and down on this layer is pretty good. You'd have to put shims under the tailstock to correct that. But it's the side to side that's important as far as diameter goes. I'll zoom in again, you can clearly see it's not lined up. Right? Not lined up. I've got a ground steel bar here. It's actually a layer shaft out of a gearbox. It's been ground, it's got good centers on it. So I'm going to put that in between centers. Come on, bastard. You. If I put a clock gauge on there and traverse a clock gauge along, it should tell us how far out the tailstock actually is. Let's see if we find zero. Another one that'll do. Gently bring that down. That is a mile away, right? That is really bad. It's going to cause things to cut a taper, so we need to adjust it. So if we come to the tail stock end, it's actually mounted on a dovetail, and that's two adjusting the screws wally that side so this is in two halves split down there that's the lever that clamps it down locks it off and also clamps it together so we need to loosen those screws off or loosen one screw off because one screw pushes it against another until that clock gauge shows zero so we need that clock to go into there which is zero So I've loosened one off, I'm going to take the other one and see which way it moves because I keep getting this wrong. That's the right way. Right, so I'm going to lock the tail stock off again. Run the clock gauge back up and down. Onto zero. Right, that's halved the problem. It's not half as bad. So we're going to do the same thing again. Loosen off the tail stock. Loosen off that a little bit, like we did before. And tighten up the other one. Right. Everything's locked up again. Back to the beginning. On zero. Even better again, it's nearly there. A very small amount, I'm moving this, very small amount indeed. So it's on zero, back down to this end, one thou, not a great lot, but it's one thou the other way this time. So we'll make sure that this one here is really snugged up. You can see it is one, it's one pushes against another, that's how it works. And then back to zero, or back to the beginning rather. On to zero. That's pretty good. 
Then it will set a zero. Wind it back down to the other end. So that is basically spot on. If you haven't got one of these test bars in your, in your local garage or your local transmission repair shop, I'm sure if you went in nicely with a box of biscuits, they would give you an old ground shaft with two good centers in. You can buy them, but for the sort of accuracy we need, I think that's pretty good. I've got a piece of bar set up just in the collar shop. I'm just going to machine the end nice and flat. And I'm going to go in with a spot drill. I've got a 4mm drill in my best drill chuck. I'm going to try and get a little bit closer. Right, so I'll watch carefully. I'll wind the drill in nice and slowly and see if it deflects. And I don't think it did. We'll do it again. Quite impressed with these tools. I've got two boxfuls. I've got them given and they do good at this world so they're going to be quite useful. They're just cheap and cheery ones but they do the job. This time I'm going to put a centre drill into this drill chuck. Try the drill in again. That's good straight in. Right, so I'm quite happy with that now. Once again, it's just time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. It doesn't cost any money and it does make a big difference. Anyway, thanks for watching.